Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be installing the red seat belts in my Porsche 911 991. Let's go check it out. Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm pretty excited. This video has been a long time coming. I thought about swapping out my seat belts back in my 997 days. When I first got the 991 last year, before I wrapped it blue, I was thinking about doing it. But now the wraps come off, or at least almost all the way off. You can see that there's still a little bit of blue on the handles. Uh, I wanted to go and start making some more mods, of course. That's, you know, it's what I do. Um, so red seat belts is gonna match a red sports chrono gauge face on the center of the dash, which is also gonna match a little red notch on the top of my steering wheel. And then eventually I'll be getting my calipers powder coated red. So I've got some nice little red accents across the gray exterior and the black interior. I'm really excited. In my last video, my friend Patrick and I removed the seat belts from the car. The plan originally was to replace them with these $35, $70 total red seat belts that I found on eBay that were supposed to fit Porsche 911s. They did technically fit the car, but they didn't have any wiring harnesses connected to them like the OEM ones have, which presumably has something to do with airbag, with fault detection, essentially a safety feature I would have lost if I'd have gone for those aftermarket ones. So instead, my friend Noah, um, who you may remember, uh, has the beautiful aqua blue second generation 997. He's also been thinking about doing deviated seat belts. He's gonna potentially get the blue to match his aqua blue car. Um, I knew he was thinking about it. We called him up and he suggested Max Speed Motorsports. It's a company that essentially replace the factory webbing in your seat belts for a couple of hundred dollars. And I mean, I. I removed them, what was it, Sunday? Sent them Monday, and they arrived back to me on Friday the same week. So here I am the very next weekend. I haven't been able to drive the car all week, but it's only been a week, and now I get to reinstall them. What's fantastic about this service is, you know, you ship them insured and so on, but they don't tamper or pull apart the mechanism at all. They release the webbing, they put the new webbing in, stitch it all back together. They're reusing the, the harness, the components. Everything essentially comes back untouched. You just have different seat belts. So you've got the factory mechanism still, which is gonna plug into the safety features, but of course you now have aftermarket fabric. So as long as you are aware of what that fabric is and that you're willing to take that risk of not having the factory fabric, you've got yourself for a couple of hundred dollars and a fairly straightforward uh, removal and installation procedure some DVA stitched seat belts. I think they look great. So already I've gone through the process of reinstalling the seat belt on the driver's side. It took me about half an hour to 45 minutes. There were a couple of things that I just needed to remind myself on how to do by going back to my DIY video from the other day. Uh, now one comment I got on the first video from a lot of people um, asking why I didn't dis disconnect the battery. From what I understand online, you can get airbag error messages in your instrument cluster, which you'll need to have taken away if you go to a Porsche dealer or a friend that has one of the um, aftermarket Dubries to connect in and, and remove the codes. Um, so that could be a trip to Porsche. Um, I didn't disconnect the battery because unfortunately, just the way my schedule shook out, removing the, uh, the seat belts, I decided to do in the middle of the garage the car wasn't gonna be able to sit here for the whole week given that we had snow coming and my wife was gonna to need to park here. So I ended up putting the seats back in or at least the driver's seat back in, driving it onto the, the ramp and here it sat. So 
I did keep my battery connected, but no issues with the airbags. I'm probably going to have an error message in the dashboard once I'm finished, but that's something that Porsche can, can remedy in a matter of minutes. So that's just one word of advice, warning, you know, caution, what have you. Um, and then of course, if you don't feel comfortable with any of this, because this is a safety feature of the car, it's a critical part of your safety driving the car. If you don't feel comfortable, if you don't have the faith in this process to do it, don't attempt it. It is relatively straightforward. I would say that, you know, overall this job's probably about a six out of 10 um, with everything you need to do. The seats are a little easier. Getting the, the trim apart is a little more difficult. Putting the seat belt back in is sort of in the middle. So I would say it averages out at around a six out of 10. But again, it is a safety feature. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, don't touch it. Go to your Porsche specialist, go to your independent specialist, and they'll be able to do it for you. All right, disclaimer's over. Let's first start with a quick look around the car as it is with one, car, one side of the car with the seat belt and the seat, the other side without the seat and the seat belt. We're gonna talk a little bit about and just sort of just recap the, uh, the removal procedure that we did the other day. And then we're just gonna jump straight into putting in the new seat belt. Let's go check it out. Well, welcome to the inside of my 991. As you can see, the driver's side has been installed. Let's just jump straight to it and look at how good these seat belts look. They, uh, they work, you know, just before, just as, as the, uh, the black ones worked, of course. Um, I think they look really tight against the, uh, the interior. Now, the first thing that Nick Murray commented on when he saw the photo of this online was don't look at the back seat belts. <laughs> what a bastard. <laughs> now that I've installed the front, or I will have installed the two front seat belts, if I wanted to change the rear seat belts, I'm going to have to do this whole procedure over again. The seats are gonna to have to come out um, because I'm needs gonna get in the car, remove the rear seat belts. Um, there's probably some trim. In fact, there is. I'm just, I'm not gonna to touch the rear seat belts, at least not for now. But this is what the, uh, the new red seat belts look like. I think they look fantastic. From, uh, from Max Speed, um, the company that did these, um, this is their bright red option. There is a darker red option for Carmine Red. Um, this is a pretty spot on match for Guards Red and it's gonna go great with the, uh, the matching sports chrono that goes up there. Um, and since folks online have found out that I'm putting red accents in, I've had loads of recommendations for where else I could put red touches. So as an example, uh, some uh, floor mats with little red stitching. I actually really like that idea. Um, I found a black carbon fiber um, PDK shifter, but with some red accents in the center. Um, maybe that's going too far. <laughs> Nick Murray suggested that I uh, change out the Alcantara roof of the car to be red. Um, but you know, for now, this is fantastic. So let's just talk a little bit around how I did the job first. And we're gonna take a look at both sides so that you get that sort of, you know, um, before and after kind of perspective. Okay, so quick flip. Uh, let's talk through um, what we just looked at uh, in the installed side of the car now that we've got the uninstalled side of the car. So these are the plastic pieces of trim that come off the front of the rails. And uh, we have our little bolts here with the, uh, the e-torque heads. Um, this is the trim uh, that came off here. Uh, which way around? That way around. The trim that came off there. You can see it's got two clips and it's got the plug at the top and another couple of plugs here which hold it into place. Uh, and then, of course, we have our speaker cover. Um, I actually removed the little tweeter and the, uh, the speaker here, but discovered subsequently I didn't need to do that, but at least here's the speaker cover. And then let's just get to the main event. Here's the seatbelt itself, back from uh, the store, back from Max Speed. So here are the two uh, wiring harnesses I was talking about. One's blue and one's yellow. Very similar to the plugs that are in the back of the air bag in the steering wheel and other um, important electrical uh, safety connections in the car. Um, so some kind of safety feature. Uh, this bolt here holds it into place down here. And then uh, this ultimately feeds up through the top, comes down and gets connected to the side. And then this guy here connects to the top. Now, when I first got this back, 
Um, I was, for the life of me, trying to take the seat belt out and it just would not come out and give me any slack. It isn't until you actually sit it at the exact right position in the metal holder, in the metal harness bind here, that the seat belt actually then comes up. So it has to be in a certain position. And that's, you know, for example, if you roll a car, God forbid, and you came off the road and you're at any kind of angle, the seat belt automatically locks into place, whether it's, you know, that side, that side, unfortunately, you know, upside down. But as long as it's in the right position and there's no motion detected, um, it, it'll come up nicely. So seizing this back into place is what I had to do on that side. I'm bolting this down first before I could then feed this up through the trim, bring it back down, connect it, and uh, away we go. So there it is, pretty straightforward, I think. Um, I'm gonna lace in some shots here and there as I edit this, of course, so that you can see what's actually going on behind here. Um, but if you have any problems, if you have any questions and you're attempting this job, please don't hesitate to reach out. Now, for the second half of the video, let's actually get this other seatbelt installed, and then we're gonna take the car for a quick drive. Okay, guys, let's start getting this reinstalled. I'm gonna start by putting in this guy. With the uh, bolt facing outwards, you can see here, we've got a yellow connector and a blue connector. And the yellow connector is closest to me. And then let me show you this bit as well. There is a little metal um, ledge here that just sits out and that sort of has a little place to sit into on the side of the car. Okay, so that's nicely in place. First off, I'm just going to get some slack and feed it up and around. Just in here, uh, let me see if I can get it with the, the iPhone. Just inside here, there is a little, almost looks like a tie clip that's just sort of flush to the side and you feed the belt up through that so it feeds it nicely from the receptacle up to the top. All right, let's keep going. So I'm gonna attach the yellow wiring harness first. Just plug that little clip back in. And then the blue wiring harness goes in at the top there's a little orange pusher on the back to secure it in place. And then I need the bolt. I'm just gonna hold this puppy into position. And this is a, uh, what is this? This is a 10 millimeter, I think it's a spline. Um, can you see here, it's got like the, Little, uh, little notches all the way around the spline. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Now there are precise torques for these bolts, which I can't remember off the top of my head. I will include them in the, uh, the description below the video. But there are three bolts to make sure that are, you know, highly secure. Uh, okay, so that is the receptacle back into place. I'm now gonna attach this up here 
uh, and just let it hang so that I can then put the, the trim back into place. This should also be the same uh, bolt, it is. This one up here, so that the bolt can go in securely, but also there is still movement in the mechanism, has a little spacer. And the one at the bottom has a bigger spacer. This is the smaller spacer. So this is actually going to sit nicely behind here. Now, because this has a bit of weight on it as you're screwing it in, make sure you don't thread it or misthread it even. So I'm going to try to like take it all the way in as much as I can just with my fingers. Make sure there's still a little bit of movement. And then finish it off with the ratchet. That was maybe just a little too tight. And tighten it now. Which way? You just want to make sure there's still a little bit of movement. So there we go. Okay, now uh, I'm going to try and mount this, and then ultimately I'll get down here and put the uh, the last bolt in down here. But let's at least get. Now, this, this getting it off was tricky. Getting it back on on the other side was also tricky. Because essentially you, you're going up first and then you're coming down. But you've got to make sure that everything's on. And actually, you know what? I take it back. It might actually be easier to do this with that up. So, there we go, in and down. All right. So I'm going to put this back up and then I'm going to put the speaker in and we'll get it all settled back nicely. Now let's quickly get the, uh, the speaker installed. So I'm going to start with the tweaker and it's got this little black clip on the back. Now these tweaker plugs don't actually sit in all that securely and um, I've discovered from other folks that have done this job that as they've been trying to find out rattles in their side panel it's because the, uh, the wire is dropped out of the tweaker and that's what's rattling. Okay, tweaker in place. Just a you know a clip on the back of the speaker, pretty straightforward. 
can only go in one way. T15, I think. That's the speaker in, and then just pops back into place. So wait, this is going to go up that way. Therefore, it needs to feed in this way. Okay, seatbelts in. Uh, this trim isn't quite back into place. I need to just wiggle it around, but I'm not gonna do that now. I'll do that after. Let's get the, uh, let's get the seat back in next. Okay guys, so here's the final part of the job, getting the car in. Now, for anybody with a 911 and you're looking to save weight, take out one of the seats. They weigh a ridiculous amount of weight. trying to remember which way <laughs> I took this out is uh, obviously part of the fun. Okay, let's get the wiring harness hooked up so that I can then put the seat belt or, you know, move the seat back. All right, let's see if we can get the, the wiring harness on. So you can see down here this black piece, that was the one that was causing us trouble earlier. So I'm going to put the wiring harness back together first uh, and then put it back on its little uh, grooves, this little rail here. And then the other uh, plug goes in here on the, the other side where the motor is. And actually, as you push it together, the black part of the harness should clip together. So there we're in. Bottom to top, not top to bottom. There we go. And then the wiring harness, the motor, right here. And then you've got this little plug that just keeps the wire in place and prevents you from pulling on any of the important parts of the mechanism. Okay, so now with the ignition on, I should be able to bring the seat back. Okay. Hey. 
All right, let's take it for a little spin. The car's still working, good news. So I've got to say you guys, I do really like this mod. And uh, you know, I had to pay for these seat belts. I didn't get them for free. You know, they're not being donated to me and, and influencing me unjustly. You know, I'm being pretty objective. The ones I got from eBay, not great. Sent them back. But these ones are so nice. They feel just like factory. They're using the uh, the original OEM factory uh, receptacle and bolts and, and, and all of the hardware um, plugged into the, the factory uh, seatbelt, you know, jobby down here in the middle. The other seat went back in just fine. The trim went back together just fine. Turns out actually I hadn't popped in the plug in the middle, which is why it wasn't sitting properly. Now it's in. Now my Red Sports Chrono face is in. And uh, there's, a, there's a DIY video already for that on my channel if you wanna know how to do that. Uh, and those clock faces are available from autoamateur.com in case you wanna buy one. Whatever color you like, let me know. Uh, but now I'm just gonna take the car out for a quick rag. And uh, you know, hopefully break in these seatbelts the good way, not the bad way. And that's it for another video. Like I said, you know, these are factory safety equipment, you know, sort of features of the car, so you gotta be really careful. Um, so if you don't feel 100% comfortable working on them, of course, you know, don't do it. One second, hold that thought. still works so good uh, but yeah I'd probably say overall the job took you know sort of two or three hours to get the seat belts out and that included both of the seats the rear seats the trim the belts and then probably about the same amount of time putting them back actually uh, I found um, what was the trickiest part of putting them back it was probably actually trying to just put the the side panel uh, on the back, you know, the side trim there, back onto the car. Um, there are maybe five of those really big black hooks and you've got to align them all just right, And but you've got to lift it up, push it back and then slot it down. Um, that was a little fiddly, uh, but the belts themselves, super easy. Uh, make sure you torque them properly and uh, check out the details below. Um, I'll make sure I put that information down there. But uh, other than that, I've got the red seat belts. I've got the red sports chrono clock. Now it's time for the red notch on the uh, top of the steering wheel. And, uh, and then I'll be doing the calipers. Got to get to Project 996 though. That's going to be the next video I'm making. Uh, Patrick and I will be doing a walk around the car once it's back at the auto amateur garage. Now that I can actually drive this thing, <laughs> now the seats and the belts are back in it, uh, I'm going to be able to park this on the other side of the garage and the 996 is going to be going on top of the lift. It looks so good, you guys. I can't wait to show you. It looks so, so good. Shark skin blue, kinda like barley blue. Uh, but you know, that's it. Another day, another video, another opportunity to rag. See you in the next one soon, bye.